Hi, up papaya, everyone. We've been talking Fire Emblem for a fair amount of time now on the Claire Fluffle channel. We've talked to Jagans, asked some spicy controversy, and tons of Fire Emblem Engage. But for today's video, I want to keep it simple and just talk about my favorite class in all of Fire Emblem. I love Jagans, I adore Ests, I relish in the money I get from controversy. But for me, nothing in Fire Emblem feels quite as good as getting likes, comments, and notification bells rung after you subscribe to my channel for more Fire Emblem videos. <laughs> Nothing feels quite as good as using units in the fighter class. Uh, and, and, and by extension, I guess whatever they naturally promote into. Now, I can pretend that this is another one of those archetype videos, and I can call this the Barst Archetype, or the Board and Cord Archetype, but I'm gonna go ahead and call it the Not Everything Needs an Archetype Archetype, and just talk about why I love this class. First of all, um, hello! How can you not love fighters? Look, in the first game, these are the portraits of the first three fighters that you get. One is a palette swap, two are exactly the same, and their faces look almost as dumb as they do in this Fire Emblem Cypher card! Barst, what is, it, what, what is that face? Fire Emblem Engage having two units that fall into this class style, at least at base, Boucheron and Panette, I'm going to give my thoughts on them as well. Should be fun. But, okay, I'm gonna scientifically break down why fighters are so cool, okay? All of my sources come from these glasses. I am SMRT. I mean SMART. We'll use Path of Radiance as an example since it has my favorite fighter in the entire series, Boyd. You get Boyd in Chapter 1, meaning that you have him from the very beginning. Oh, oh, okay, almost the very beginning, but whatever. And unlike the other members of your scrub squad, Ike and Oscar, Titania is anything but a scrub. Please understand. Boyd uses axes. Axes are great because they deal a big damage. Their base might is 8, and for the uninitiated, your unit strength plus the weapon's might equals your unit's big dexterity. Boyd has the highest one of your starting squad, again, discounting Titania. And if you've watched my video about Jagans, you already know why they're crazy. Watch a place where Boyd struggles compared to Oscar and Ike are his hit rates and durability. Axes are the strongest weapon in the game, but they're the least accurate. Look at Boyd, he spent so long swinging that axe of his. How is he supposed to even hit? Oh boy, I sure do love swinging my axe. I really hope it is. Oh well, I like the animation, so it, it, it's cool. Anyway, Boyd's durability is- Hold on there a minute! Somebody likes the animations in Path of Radiance, but they're so bad! Look at the GBA! Game. Boyd's durability isn't as big of an issue, since he comes with an insane amount of HP. He takes a lot of damage, he deals a lot of damage. Sometimes he misses, sometimes he hits. The feeling of higher risk versus high reward is a very satisfying. What makes it- No. Oh. Ha ha. Very funny. Get out of here! Boy, directly into my veins. Sheesh. Actually, let me- let me try- let me try- Oh! God, that's the good stuff. Oh, I could get used to this. What makes him even better, though, is his insane potential to snowball. Boyd may not have the best defensive growths, but who needs defense when you've got this much HP and 60% strength, baby? And his speed is nothing to sneeze at either. You can live off of 40%, which is enough in my book. Plus, there's a very early performance enhancer that you can give him to patch his speed. Who else are you gonna give it to? Oscar? Kieran? Come on! Live a little! I'm sure Boyd gets weighed down a bit at first because... I, I mean, have you ever picked up an axe before? Those things are pretty heavy. But the more strength that he gets, the less he gets weighed down. And the more speed that he gets, the less that he gets weighed down. <laughs> Kinda. That sentence made more sense in, in my head. But alas, Fire Emblem do be Fire Emblem, which is a gambling at extreme. He only levels speed 40% of the time. But think of it like this. There is a 100% chance that Boyd will level speed 40% of the time. Erase that second number and statistics from your head, and you'll be using Boyd like a champ in no time. To be, ever so slightly, more serious for a bit, and that's what's so much fun about Boyd, and all of the fighters across the series. You start out with these units that deal so much damage in one singular hit, but they take that damage in return, almost like they're a living, breathing devil axe. As they level up, they still take heaps of damage, but they dish out even more. Most of their stats aren't great, but the two or three that are make them an absolute blast to use because they're what you want for combat. All you gotta do is make sure they don't get hit too much or dodge most enemy attacks. Simple, right? 
So how do the fighters of Engage stack up? Well, uh, let's start with Boucheron. He has a very valuable role in the early game before you get access to second seals as the only unit who can chain attack. You'll want to position him in ways where he can deal extra chip damage, but this also means putting him in position to be hit a lot if you aren't careful. And now, don't get me wrong, his bulk is pretty good, not to mention that even when you get Lapis, she doesn't have two range, so he's really your only unit that can chain attack for a while. Still, his high risk, high reward is through the roof, and his hit rates are actually really good too. Yeah, you'll miss more 80% from chain attacking than you'll miss 1% from just being bad, but that's all part of the fun with fighters, right? From my experience, sad to say, he does kind of fall off towards the mid-game where you get better units. See, I kind of like having Etienne around since she's such a strong archer and flyers are really scary. While Alfred has solid movement and pretty good bulk with a dearth of solid reclassing options and the Sigurd Ring, which really helps out in the early game. And honestly, he's got other good options as the game goes on. But Boucheron's main perk throughout the game for me at least, was chain attacking, which is something that he did great, but not as well as other units. Him being so enormous in size is definitely something that I really liked, and the character, love him. But he wasn't dealing as much damage as I wanted him to, while I had to watch him get doubled. And for a fighter, that's not what I want to see. But I really liked him, so I made him work. Fire Emblem can be fun like that. But, uh, okay, seriously guys? I have to talk about who may actually be my new favorite fighter. Well, I mean, that, that's kind of a lie, not not only since I need more time to decide if she goes above Boyd and Marty, but also because her fighter promotion is much less traditional. Panette starts as a Berserker, but given how promoting works, the axe proficiency being all that's needed makes it a legitimate promo option for fighters. Thus, she fits. Berserkers in this game don't actually give a crit boost, but her personal skill of giving her crit if she isn't at max HP, that, that certainly does. Reclassing is an option, of course, and even keeping her in line with the traditional fighter options, Warrior is just an amazing class in general. And on top of Panette's stats, yeah, you're, you're probably going to want to make her a Warrior or something similar. She has a lot of fun class options. I see a lot of people are making her a General, and that just sounds so much fun. But for me, I'm going to stick with Berserker or Warrior. Well, in my first playthrough more specifically, I kept her as a Berserker. And that was a mistake, because I also could have made her a hero! It fits in the fighter promo line, thank you Sacred Stones! But what made her so much fun for me, was how well she paired with Ike. You see, Ike's big thing is taking damage... ...to take less damage. Panette has an insanely massive HP stat with reasonable defenses, which is very fitting for someone in the fighter line. Except, oh wait, when Ike gets resolved... ...which can basically be immediately, since his Paralog is early, Panette gets insane damage reduction when her HP is under 75%. Not to mention Ike's other defensive buffs, and Wrath giving her up to 30% extra crit. I'm sure that other units can take great advantage of what Ike offers, but Panette's bases and growths are so perfect for Ike. She can basically handle hard mode by herself, and I didn't even think to use things like Pure Waters. And yeah, that really would have helped! As is, her strength is miles better than everyone else's. She uses the strongest weapon type with solid accuracy. She can skill inherit abilities like Vantage from Leaf and Para from Corrin. And more often than not, her crit was somewhere around 90% with a Killer Axe. I've heard people be able to get it upwards of something like 200 or something, but overkill is eventually a little much after a while. I'll stick to 100 or close to it. That's good enough for me. And even if I had to drop the Killer Axe for a Hand Axe, her crit still typically sat between 40 to 60%. And her speed? I don't even get me started on her speed. Well, okay, you can actually get me started on her speed. It was just good enough, really. She doubled most things, but not everything. But good enough is okay. And okay is wonderful. It just... Ah, I love Panette so much. And a fun character and everything. I like where her development goes, but really fun for destroying maps. I genuinely can't recommend the Panette Ike combo enough. So let me know in the comments now, what do you guys think about fighters? And what do you think about Panette and Boucheron? Are fighters your favorite class too? Now, I can talk all day about how much fun they are. And in the future, when we're not knee deep in engage hype, might be a while, I hope to make a longer video about this class. I didn't get to talk about some of my other favorite fighters, and I'm always itching to talk about a class that's this much fun. Now, I could even talk more about Panette and engage in Boucheron too, which... And at least for Panette, I am planning on making an entire video about her. But until then, or whatever other video you see me in next, I am Claire. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all around. Bye! Bye.